go. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Kayla and welcome. So today I'm sharing three nourishing balanced bowls that are full of flavor, color, and nutrients. And these one bowl meals are actually really popular on Pinterest. They have been for years now. But the best part about them is that most of the ingredients can be individually prepped in advance as part of your weekly meal prep routine. And then when you're ready to serve it, you just reheat the portions that need to be reheated, toss it in a bowl, and you're ready to go. So the three balanced bowls that I'm sharing today are my blackened cod with a fresh strawberry pineapple salsa served over cilantro rice. And of course, you can substitute the rice with cauliflower rice if you want to. A savory breakfast bowl with my grass-fed beef sausage and this steak and quinoa bowl with my homemade chimichurri sauce. And y'all, if you don't try any other recipe from today's video, please try this homemade chimichurri sauce. It is so good. And feel free to mix and match any of the ingredients from today's recipes to build your own balanced bowl. The whole point is to really just get creative with it and include healthy, nutritious foods that you enjoy. And all of the recipes today are gluten-free and dairy-free. And today's video is actually in collaboration with ButcherBox, which is a monthly subscription box that delivers high-quality fish and meats right to your doorstep. And y'all, I am so excited about this collaboration because I am a huge fan of butcher box i have been for a very long time and we're going to get into their monthly subscription boxes later in today's video but anyway let's head to the kitchen and get started first i'm making this blackened cod fish bowl with a strawberry pineapple salsa over cilantro rice and yes it is just as good as it looks let's start by making the strawberry pineapple salsa first so that we can let it chill in the fridge you'll need two cups of strawberries and you can slice them up as small or large as you'd like and y'all know i love sneaking in and berries anytime I can because they're a great source of vitamin C which is not only good for your immune system but also really good for collagen synthesis so it's good for your skin as well and of course they're also a great source of antioxidants You'll also need two cups of diced pineapple. Now I will say that the ripeness of the pineapple can make or break this recipe. So you do wanna make sure that the pineapple is super ripe. And if you don't have access to pineapples or maybe you're allergic, feel free to substitute it with two cups of mango to make a strawberry mango salsa. Either way, trust me, it's gonna be delicious. And by the way, I like to add the core and everything because the core of the pineapple has the most concentration of the bromelain enzyme, which is super good for your digestive health, so you definitely don't wanna let that core go to waste. You'll also need half a cup of diced Roma tomatoes. For this recipe, make sure you remove the seeds first and then just chop them up into small chunks. Half a cup of green bell pepper, de-seeded and also chopped into small chunks half a cup of diced red onion. And remember, like I always say, onions are a great source of quercetin, which is also a powerful antioxidant and also has anti-inflammatory properties. Now this is optional, but I like to add in half of a jalapeno. Just make sure you remove those seeds unless you want it to be super spicy. Chop it up into small pieces. Now if you have sensitive skin, you may wanna wear gloves when removing the jalapeno seeds. And one third cup of fresh cilantro. Finally dice that up and let's mix that all together and just look at all these vibrant colors. It's loaded with antioxidants, fiber, and nutrients. And now I'm gonna add the zest from one lime along with three tablespoons of lime juice. And I forgot to show it on camera, but I also added a pinch of sea salt. This salsa recipe makes about eight servings worth. And for exact measurements and macros, be sure to check out the blog post, which is linked above, for all of the recipes and macros in today's video. All right, let's cover the bowl and then let it marinate in the fridge for a few minutes while we prep everything else. For the cilantro rice, add one tablespoon of avocado oil to a skillet over medium heat along with three fourths cups of dry rice. And just make sure all the rice is coated with the oil and just continue heating that until the rice is toasted, making sure that you stir it constantly to avoid burning the rice. And once that rice is good and toasted and golden in color, add in half a teaspoon of minced garlic, saute that for one more minute, then add in one and a quarter cup of water, two tablespoons of lime juice, half a teaspoon of sea salt, and the zest from one lime. Give that a good mix, bring it to a boil, reduce the heat to low medium, 
add a lid and let that simmer for about 15 minutes or until it has soaked up all that liquid. Once it's done, turn off the heat, leave the lid on and let it sit for about 10 minutes, then fluff it up with a fork. At this point, you wanna add in the chopped cilantro and you can add however much you'd like. I'm adding in about one third of a cup. And let's set that aside while we prep the blackened cod. For the spice rub, you'll need two teaspoons of chili powder, half a teaspoon each of paprika, garlic powder, sea salt, and raw cane sugar or a low carb sweetener, and one fourth teaspoon each of cumin and onion powder. Mix that up and then add in half a tablespoon of avocado oil to create sort of a paste. And by the way, this seasoning is enough for two cod fillets. And then you're just gonna rub that onto each side of the cod, making sure that you coat every little inch of it. In a skillet over medium heat, add in one tablespoon of avocado oil. Once the oil is hot, you'll wanna add the cod and sear it for about one to two minutes on each side, just to give it that blackened, char-grilled texture. And then we're gonna bake the fish at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 to 15 minutes or until it's fully cooked through. All right, to assemble your bowl, add in one serving of the cilantro rice. I'm also adding in some spinach and cherry tomatoes for extra fiber and nutrients, followed by one serving of the strawberry pineapple salsa, one blackened cod filet, and then finishing it off with one fourth of an avocado for some healthy fats. But this blackened cod fish bowl is so full of flavor, y'all, and pretty much everything except the avocado can be prepped individually in advance at the beginning of the week as part of your weekly meal prep routine. And I cannot wait to hear y'all's feedback on this one. For bowl number two, we're gonna be making this savory breakfast bowl with my grass-fed beef sausage patties. And we're gonna be using the grass-fed ground beef from my butcher box. In fact, all of the fish and meats that I'm using today are from my butcher box. Now, if you're not familiar, butcher box is a monthly subscription box that delivers high quality fish and meats directly to your doorstep. Their beef products are 100% grass-fed, the chicken is free range, and the seafood is wild caught. They truly do care about the quality of their meat and they're very transparent about how their animals are raised. And y'all know I'm a huge supporter of high quality fish and meats, but sometimes they're hard to find at your local grocery store or they're super expensive, which is why I love Butcher Box because they have a huge selection with lots of variety at a great value. So in this month's box, I got the wild caught cod, which of course we just used in our blackened cod fish bowl, some grass fed strip loin steaks, a whole chicken, these boneless pork chops, grass-fed ribeye steaks, these wild-caught salmon patties, and of course, the grass-fed ground beef. They give you lots of flexibility too, so you can create a custom box and pick whatever you wanna add to it, which is what I did, or they also have pre-made boxes for your convenience. And you can cancel your subscription at any time with no penalties. And by the way, they are running a special right now where you get two pounds of grass-fed ground beef for free with every box. Plus, y'all know I have a discount code for y'all as well, so all of that information will be listed for y'all in the description box below. Okay, so first, let's make the grass-fed beef sausage patties. You're gonna need one pound of grass-fed ground beef, and with sausage, it's all about the seasonings. So I'm adding in one teaspoon each of sea salt, paprika, and garlic powder, half a teaspoon each of dried sage, dried thyme, onion powder, black pepper, and red pepper flakes. And if you don't want it to be too spicy, just add one fourth teaspoon of the red pepper flakes. Mix all that together until the seasonings are fully incorporated into the beef, and then separate that into roughly eight equal parts, and then form them into patties. In a skillet over medium heat, add in one tablespoon of oil, along with the grass-fed beef sausage patties, and just cook them on each side until they're fully cooked through. This recipe makes eight patties, and they can be prepped in large batches and frozen for your monthly meal preps. But I've shared this recipe with y'all before and they are a great alternative to pork sausage. Let's go ahead and get the quinoa started next. Of course, you can substitute this with riced cauliflower for a lower carb option, but you're gonna need one cup of dry quinoa. In a saucepan, add in two cups of water along with the quinoa and a pinch of sea salt. Bring that to a boil, reduce the heat to low medium, cover it with a lid and let that simmer for about 15 minutes. And while that's cooking, let's saute the cherry tomatoes and mushrooms. You'll need one cup of cherry tomatoes and one cup of sliced mushrooms. Add one tablespoon of avocado oil to your skillet 
peel it and just saute those on medium heat until the tomatoes are slightly blistered and the mushrooms are soft. Of course, don't forget to season them with some sea salt, pepper, and paprika. And by the way, with these balanced bowl recipes, it's important to make sure that you season every layer. So that way when you assemble the bowls, they're full of flavor and not bland because one thing we don't do on this channel is bland. <laughs> to sneak in some extra fiber and nutrients, I'm going to de-stem some kale and just roughly chop it up, two cups worth to be exact, and then I'm going to saute that in one tablespoon of avocado oil until it's fully wilted. Be sure to lightly season that with some sea salt and pepper. And then going back to the quinoa, once it's done, turn off the heat, let it sit for five minutes, and then fluff it up with a fork. And lastly, I'm gonna quickly boil an egg. For this breakfast bowl, I like it to be more of a soft boiled egg so the yolk is still slightly runny, but you can certainly do a hard boiled egg. Now let's bring this balanced bowl all together, add in one serving of the quinoa, some of the sauteed kale and cherry tomato mixture, along with one to two grass-fed beef sausage patties for extra protein, and the soft boiled egg. This savory breakfast bowl with my beef sausage patties is not only full of flavor and nutrients, but I promise you it's going to keep you full for hours. And again, if you prep the individual ingredients in advance, you can toss this breakfast bowl together in minutes for a quick breakfast bowl recipe. The last balanced bowl recipe I'm sharing today is my chimichurri steak and quinoa bowl. And let me just tell y'all, you may become addicted to the chimichurri sauce because it is just that good. Okay, let's start by making the sauce first so it can marinate. The star ingredient is fresh parsley. You're gonna need one cup's worth tightly packed, which is about one whole bundle of parsley. And just chop it up as finely as you can. And parsley is such a superfood. It's wonderful for your kidneys and your bone health and it's also a rich source of vitamin K. Next, chop up four garlic cloves and taking some fresh oregano, go ahead and remove the leaves from the stem and then finely dice those up until they're minced. And of course, oregano is also a superfood. It has powerful antimicrobial properties. All right, in a mixing bowl, add in the parsley, one third cup plus one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, the oregano, two tablespoons of red wine vinegar, half a teaspoon of sea salt, the chopped garlic, 1 4 teaspoon of red pepper flakes, and a pinch of black pepper. Mix that all up until everything is fully coated with the oil. And I'm just gonna say it again, y'all have to try this recipe. Okay, let's set that aside at room temperature to let it marinate. Next, I'm gonna roast up some beets and sweet potatoes. Make sure you peel them first and then cut them into about one inch cubes. Now we all know how good sweet potatoes are for us, but beets are so underrated. They have tons of health benefits. They're a good source of folate. They can help to keep your blood pressure in check and they even have cancer cancer fighting properties. I like to roast them, juice them, and even add them to my smoothies. Add them to a lined baking sheet with one tablespoon of avocado oil, some sea salt, paprika, and pepper to taste. Toss them around to make sure they're all fully coated with the oil and the seasonings, and let's roast these at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 to 30 minutes or until they are tender. And while those are cooking, let's prep the grass-fed steak. I'm gonna season my steak with sea salt and pepper. Make sure you rub it onto each side of the steak. In a skillet over medium-high heat, add one tablespoon of avocado oil or grass-fed ghee. Personally, when cooking steak, I like to use grass-fed ghee. Once the oil is hot, you'll wanna sear the steak on each side for a couple of minutes. Add in some garlic cloves and fresh thyme, and then you want to baste the steak to make sure that it soaks up all those juices. All right, now we're going to bake it at 500 degrees Fahrenheit for about four to five minutes, depending on how you like it cooked. Once it's done, go ahead and slice it up. I will say I left mine in the oven just a couple minutes too long. I usually like my steak a medium or medium well, but regardless, it was still delicious. Okay, now it's time to assemble our balanced bowl. I'm adding in one serving of the quinoa that we cooked earlier, four ounces of the steak, the roasted sweet potatoes and beets, and then finishing it off with the homemade chimichurri sauce. And the sauce is what really takes this bowl recipe to the next level. But there you have it, another delicious balanced bowl recipe that can be prepped in advance. Well, all right, y'all, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you give one of these balanced bowl recipes a try because they are all so delicious. Don't forget, if you make any of my recipes or any of my meal preps, you can tag me over on Instagram and I will reshare that on my stories. I wanna thank 
ButcherBox for collaborating with me on today's video. Don't forget the discount code will be listed in the description box below. You definitely don't want to miss out on the special of getting two pounds of grass-fed ground beef with every box. I feel like that's a really good deal. But anyway, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and you enjoy healthy recipes, healthy lifestyle advice, healthy meal preps, all that good stuff, be sure to hit that subscribe button below. But that's it for today. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.